What's going on you guys, Uncle Jesse here. New York Comic Con is right around the corner and I need to put on a little muscle. I wanna try and make my own variation of a muscle suit using 3D printing and some of these fine materials from Smooth On. So before I got to the actual mold, I first needed to create an actual variation of chest file that I wanted to run off and make muscles for. So I was looking for something that I could use, more or less simulate some chest, pecs and some abs to really help sculpt out anything that I might be wearing under my spandex. So what I ended up doing was taking out my iPhone and using Scandi Pro. And recently I picked up a mannequin online to help house some of the projects that I'm working on. I needed something that I could put the costumes on while I'm working on them, not just myself, that somewhat mimicked my body shape. Obviously I'm not as in shape as the mannequin was, but it actually lent itself to the portion here of coming up with the actual scan. So once I created the scan or a scan that I liked using Scandi Pro, so that export I took into Mesh Mixer and was able to slice off a whole bunch of the unnecessary portions of that. And then once I got to something that I was relatively happy with, I then took that exported file, and this is where it gets even more complicated, and I brought it into my iPad using Forger 3D. That's an app for your iPad that allows me to use my Apple Pencil and my iPad that actually allowed me to clean up that exported file from Mesh Mixer. So there's a whole lot of steps in between this whole thing for me to get to this actual printed file here and then ran this print over on my Raise 3D N2 Plus. And after everything printed, it looked really nice and clean. As you see here, the actual print ended up failing in one portion here where the print head got caught because I think the print came loose on the bed and it knocked everything over and tried to just eyeball where the separation line was, where the print failed, and then printed the other half. I then used some 3D glue to actually seal this all up. And now I have a really nice test file and in fact, if I really wanted to, I could use this as armor or stick this under something. But the problem is it's too rigid. It's not flexible. I'm not gonna be able to bend around. It's gonna look very odd underneath spandex if I'm attempting to wear this. So that's where the idea came in that, hey, I should take a negative of this file and turn that into a mold. So what I ended up doing was taking that particular file and sending it up to Make Printable. This is an online software website that I've recently found out about and I absolutely love. And one of the cool features is that you can adjust the thickness of your files. And what I've seen so far is when you adjust the thickness, it doesn't distort the file too much. And in this case, what I really wanted to do was just make the file a lot thicker so that when I went to slice it into the block and Tinkercad, it left as much of an imprint as possible. So once I ran that through Make Printable and expanded the file and made it as thick basically as I possibly could, I then saved that, brought it back into Tinkercad, loaded it back into that block, and then created the negative file that you see here. This was all printed in the Nico Hot Rod Red PLA, which printed absolutely beautifully. This was a two and a half day long print and unfortunately I wasn't around when it ran out of filament so I ended up having to uh, reprint again I just eyeballed things and reprinted the top portion I also did not print the actual top piece I sliced that off before printing everything originally just because this has a large overhang and I did not want to have to deal with all the supports. So everything was printed support free when I went off and printed this. All right, so I picked up some clear plastic cups. I also went off and sanded the inside of my mold. Again, just trying to remove any of the high edges there or the little zits that occurred on the, the print surface there. I wanted this to be you know, relatively as smooth as possible once the foam adheres to the mold. I also found this big clear sheet of acrylic that I had sitting around in my basement for God knows how long. I actually ended up watching one of Smooth On's videos explaining how to use this. And I really and truly think I'm gonna just go with that idea of, uh, that they showed in the video where you put the, the liquid foam in here and then put down a top, either wood or something flat that will actually encase the foam. And then it's really gonna just stay in the zone here and really just fill the cavity. Since this really isn't a deep mold, it's really kind of 
of shallow and wide. My concern was if I don't put something over the top of it here, it's just going to expand in certain areas and not really fill the full mold here. So this should help with that. I also pre-drilled some really ugly holes into the, the acrylic here so that there, the foam has a little bit of an area to escape when it's going through the mold process. I also have some mold release agent. So I'm gonna give everything a good spray down, then we're gonna mix everything together and get pouring with this mold. Okay, I have two part B and one of A ready to go. Once I mix these together, I've gotta to mix it up quickly and then very, very quickly pour it in here and get it to all the different low points because it the, the process starts very, very quickly. So we'll have to try this out and see how it goes. I actually think I'm going to need a good bit more of this foam mixture to fill this more, more than I was anticipating. Okay. The first test is done and yeah, this didn't exactly work quite right. The mold release really didn't, it doesn't seem to have worked. I think actually one of the problems is uh, with PLA or 3d printing, this is very porous and I think it's just seeping into the pores. I mean, it's kind of cool that I, I have some semblance of foam muscles. These are really durable, by the way. Man, this is really, really cool material, but did not work. And I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna get this out and cleaned up now. I'm probably gonna have to sand out a bunch of this foam and then try this again. But obviously here, I did not use nearly enough foam to cover the inside. I thought I was going to have too much, but it's it actually ended up being not nearly even enough. I need to basically double or triple up the amount that I poured previously. One other thing that I'm now considering after looking at this and going through, I can't have this fill up the full cavity. It's going to protrude too far from my body. So what I'm thinking about doing is laying down the foam and then inserting this on top of it and holding down so that it foam forms a thin layer of foam around this and around the mold box here. I'm not, again, not gonna be sure if that's gonna work or not, but I do know that like this right here, this is already a lot thicker than what I would want it to be if I'm gonna actually wear this. So to help seal this in, I put down a lot of heavy coats of this primer filler paint that I had on hand basically put down two or three applications. So it's it's thickly laid in here. And as you can see, it started to do a little bit of peel action. I sanded away some of this along with the excess foam to help smooth it out a good bit and then put down more spray again. So what I'm gonna do is really lay this on thick and then try and put that in. All right, it's been about two hours and this should be fully cured now. So let's get it out of the mold and fingers crossed it comes out pretty smoothly. Oh, and before I do that, the actual test print here that I used to press into the mold, this was able to come out pretty cleanly here. I ended up having to do just a little bit of cleanup. There's still some of this foam stuck on here, but I should be able to rub it off here just a little bit further or sand it clean. Yeah, that mold release, just applying a whole lot of that seem to have done a really good job. Let's see how it comes out of this thing. All right, and here is what I think is a pretty successful attempt at making a foam set of muscles here. Pulled out the details pretty nicely here, which I was really hoping. I think pushing in my 3D printed version of this, that test print into the mold actually achieved exactly what I was going for here, where it's not gonna stick out too much and it should be able to fit pretty nicely on me with just adding a little bit of definition. I'm not going for like super bulky look of uh, like a superhuman or anything like that. I just wanted to make it look like I have a little bit more definition than what I do these days, which isn't a whole lot of definition at all. Probably should let this dry first, but I feel like I've got big boobs. I'll have to trim some of the foam so it sort of tapers 
tapers off a bit here and not is isn't just protruding from different areas. So how I'm gonna clean it up is just use some basic scissors that I had laying around. I probably could use an X-Acto knife as well, uh, but we'll see how this goes with the scissors. All right, and here's the cleaned up foam chest and ab piece. I really do think this looks a lot better now that I've cleaned it up. I think along the top here, I might try to bevel this just a little bit more. I, I think this should look pretty good. Let's shove this under my shirt here. Yeah, it's not sticking out nearly as much here in the top sections, so a lot better. And it's not super huge either, which is exactly what I was going for. Maybe I should get some men's spanks or something like that and stick it under there. All right, here's my Peter B. Parker, or at least part of my Peter B. Parker costume, the Spider-Man costume portion of this. I don't have the muscle suit in just yet, or the muscles, the chest and ab muscles here, so this is just me sucking it in and, and trying to look somewhat in shape here while wearing this. So not too bad, very Peter B. Parker-ish here. But yeah, let me try and now stick in the chest and abs and let's see how this looks. All right, so now I've got the foam muscles put inside the spandex suit. Definitely, definitely look a lot more swole in this. I'm still not sure, maybe it's too, too big, I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a, Improvement here, there's some more tapering that I need to do along the top here so it's not so prominent. And I think this looks pretty good. It definitely looks like I have a much more defined muscular chest. Uh, it's a little hard to see in the suit because there is airbrushed abs and chest on this, but there is actual definition that I can see. I can see the abs sticking through this. It's not like over the top, it's it's a bit subtle, but I can still see it there. And definitely trimming the sides has helped this fit a lot better. I need to do a much better job along the top here of thinning out the top and just beveling that more. So it lays a little bit flusher, more flush against my chest here. Overall, I think this worked really, really good. This is, I'm very excited about this, and I'm sure there's a million and one ways to go about this, and it's probably much easier to just go to Joanne Fabrics, buy some upholstery foam, and cut out some muscles and do it that way. But I wanted to do something that I had not seen online. I haven't seen any videos on this, and I was, trust me, I looked for them. And it was a fun little experiment, and I think it worked really well. All right, I think I'm gonna wrap things up here. I just wanna say, uh, thank you for watching and tuning in on this one. It was probably a much longer one than I was anticipating, but it was a big experiment and I'm glad to see that it actually worked. There's still some things that I have left to figure out on this, but in the end, I think this is gonna work really well for me in New York Comic Con and being able to beef up just a little bit. And it was really cool being able to do this with using 3D printing as the mold and skipping that entire process of having to actually make a silicone mold and just using the actual PLA that I printed over on the Ray's 3D. I just wanna say thanks again for watching you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye now.